Hello, I am JX Editor, and I am here with Darth Varkor. So Varkor, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi there, uh, I'm Darth Varkor, I'm a YouTube uh, mission and a filmmaker, and I'm currently adapting Star Wars Nazi Old Republic, which is an old RPG, into a series of films. How did you first uh, get into doing that? So, well, how did I first get into it? That's going back a while. My, the original inspiration for me was the original uh, KOTOR fan films on YouTube, which were done by uh, a user who at the time was called Kevin Sockle 2 k 6 I believe. He's now known as Star Wars KOTOR Movie Saga. He's a team. Um, and he started out just by himself, just uh, turning the first Knights of the Republic game into a film. It was like old Xbox footage captured, I think, onto like a VTR or something. And because um, there was like a free camera mod on that where you could move the camera about wherever you want and remove the in-game display. And he would like, he did his own voice for the main character. He came up with new characters and sequences. And just seeing that when I was younger, I absolutely loved it because I loved the games. And over the years, several times when I was younger, I've tried a couple of times to make my own and they've never worked. And then in 2014, I decided, well, I've seen, because that's when he completed his films and he partnered up with someone else, Darth Icy, and they were doing stuff together. And I thought, I want to do something like that, but let's try and make it a bit different. And I'll start from KOTOR 2, work my way through that, and then do KOTOR 1, kind of like the Star Wars films. You start with the originals and then you've got the prequels. So that's, that's how I got started, really, just being inspired by them and absolutely loving their films. And... Uh... So, you uh, you break from the can canonical interpretations of the ghost games. Was it was it them specifically being canonical that inspired you to do that, or was there something else? I don't know if it was them specifically. I mean, my the way I looked at it was well, they've done such a great job adapting it, you know, fairly faithfully to the game and like with how the characters presented. I thought if I'm going to do this, there's no point in me doing it unless I do it differently. And I found it really easy to do with KOTOR 2 because KOTOR 2 is such a, a different game to the first. It's a lot bigger and a lot longer, in my opinion, and there's so much more room for interpretation with it. And obviously, if you know about KOTOR 2, you know about all the, the cut content and how it was rushed to release. I figured, because there was so much cut out, there was so much room for me to go, well, I'll take that, but I don't like how that bit ties into it, and I'll make it my own kind of thing. So I'm, I'm kind of working off the basis of the game. And, of course, the original ending to Knights of the Republic 2, even with the restored content mod, is, in my opinion, it's rubbish. It's it's terrible. I mean, it was obviously setting up for a third game, which never got made. But I just thought, no, I want to make this... Well, it arguably got made. Well, yeah, but we don't we don't talk about the <laughs> MMO. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I... You don't I, talk I, about the MMO unless one of your movies needs B-roll. Oh yeah, pretty yeah, pretty much yeah. It's got some good beer on, some good sound effects, pretty much. But no, I just I didn't like any of that, or like or like the Revan book. So I thought, well, let's bring Revan into this because he's not in the second game at all. It's a mystery as to where he's gone. And I thought well, I can just why don't I take this big, unfinished mess of a brilliant story, and make it into my own thing with a start, middle, and an end. So that's that's really my main reason for it. And then once I got going with it, I just got carried away really <laughs> just by the end of like by the my final one of my original kotor 2 films the prodigal knight it is practically nothing like the game aside from the fact it's on malachor 5 <laughs> but i was i was yeah. just so into my own story by then with my own characters and i thought well you know why why follow the game now it, that's already been done darth icy did that brilliantly with his and even he didn't really stick to it that much by the end he then added his own stuff that ties into the revan novel so i thought let's just go completely different and to see what happens. The, the first one in particular, um, it was I was just completely winging it. I just thought, you know, if people don't like it, I won't carry on. We'll see what happens, really. And people did, so I just carried on with it. And uh, so, when you make these, like, what sorts of uh, what softwares do you use? Oh well, um, well for editing, I use Adobe Premiere. Uh, I used Vegas nice. Pro on the older ones, but that was just it was just too unstable by the end. Too many problems. Uh, so I use Premiere Pro, After Effects for well, special effects stuff. Um, I now use 3ds Max, so if I create such uh, shots of like the Ebon Hawk flying past in 3D, uh, that's in 3ds Max. I also use it now to create animations um, and attach them to an in-game supermodel, which is what 
the game plays its animations from, so I can actually have these new animations in the game. Um, KOTOR tool, which is like the foundation of any KOTOR modding thing, it basically, you can extract stuff from the game with it, like you can extract TGAs, which is textures for characters, you can extract modules, lighting, items, you name it, and you can create stuff in it. Um, God, I, I know as soon as I finish, I'll remember about 10 more that I've forgotten. I use um, the Lip Sync Editor with um, a software that's called Make PHM, which basically that's how I create the lip files for the games. So, like, uh, they actually move their mouths when they talk. Um, yeah, I've noticed your lip syncing is really good. Thank you. It, it takes a lot of trial and error to get it right. Um, the old method I used to do was in Kotor Tool, I would say I'd, I'd open a like a utility belt and I'd change its properties. So instead of giving you, like, I don't know, plus two stealth, it changes your character's appearance. And I would say I'd change it to Zek's appearance, stick it on Atom, put him in Zek's clothes, and just talk to Atom in the game and just film him talking. And then I would try and sync Zek's lines up to that. So that's why the old films look like really bad dubs. Um, that's but really it, smart. It, it's, I mean, I, th I thought I was a genius at the time for doing it, but then I found out there was a much better way because that way you can only film one person at a time. Whereas once you know how to do the lip syncing, you can then build it into a custom dialogue. So I could have, I don't know, I could have Zek say a line and then I would put a line underneath from, I don't know, say Revan. The camera would then cut to Revan and then I could also put a script in there tell Revan to walk to Zek in it and the game would kind of create the cut scene itself. So it's a lot easier to build an entire dialogue scene like that than to just film one character at a time talking. So yeah. with the lip sync method, then basically the problem, the only problem with it um, is it doesn't pick up Star Wars words very well. So <laughs> you've got to kind of work around that. So for Revan, if I ever put the line Revan in, I write it as Raven because it's the same mouth movement. Yeah. And for, for calf, it's car every okay. single time. So it's just that. And also then when I'm editing, Sometimes the mouth will move before the voice file plays or vice versa, and I'll just, just resync it. So it's it's took a lot of practice to get it to a level where it looks acceptable, basically. <laughs> but I think that's it, the main bits of software I use. Uh, the same also in Kotal Tool, I can write scripts, uh, in-game scripts, like telling people to play animations and stuff. So it's mainly those those are the core things that contribute to it. So, earlier you mentioned the uh, Star Wars KOTOR movie saga. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I've noticed the, those try to keep more Star Wars-y in their, in their style and execution, whereas yours adopt a more cinematic approach. Mm. Why? Um, again, it kind of comes down to the same as my last answer, really. It's just, why not? Why not make it different? Um I think it is really just worth I'm doing this. I might as well make it feel different to that so it doesn't feel like, oh, it's just the same as that. Um, the, again, with KOTOR 2 as well, I've always, in a way, thought that KOTOR 2 isn't really a Star Wars game. And I know some people might think that's crazy. It, it literally is. But just the themes and the style of storytelling, it doesn't really seem to suit Star Wars in a way. It's a lot more dark and a lot more thought-provoking. So I thought, well, let's treat this as something completely different. And I feel like it, it's a bit more, I find it a bit more of a struggle with Knights of Republic 1 because that is as classic Star as you can get. Mm, yeah, especially, with those, with, especially with those ones, it just seemed to flow naturally that it would, it, it, it wouldn't feel like Star Wars. And I still have these nods to it. Like I still have like the, um, the, the wipes and like mm -hmm. the occasional bit of Star Wars music and that. But I just, yeah, I wanted to frame Kotor 2. This is, it's how it started. I wanted to frame Kotor 2 in a different light and show because this game is so unique in how it can be interpreted the same way you can play it you can play it so many different ways you can play it as a complete um psycho you can play it as like a boy scout you can be in between and so on i just wanted to show this is a different way to interpret it and i wanted to make it a bit more i guess edgy i kind of backed away from that a bit after the first one because i think i went a bit over the top with some of the edgy stuff um but that's i just wanted to make it feel different and like you say feel more cinematic and I feel like without the title crawl, I, it gives me different and interesting ways to do the introductions to the films. Like with the start of Return of the Exile, it's like a sudden really dramatic start with the loud overpowering music. Start of the second one, I did a homage to Skyfall with Zek walking into frame and the camera focuses. 
I just, I just think it's a bit more interesting that way. Mm-hmm. But you don't know how the films are going to start, really. And I kind of that's one of the things I do like about the um, the the recent Star Wars spin-off films like Rogue One and Solo. Um, I like how they've not started with the title crawl. I rewatched I rewatched Rise of Skywalker the other day for the first time since it came out because it was on Disney Plus and just. <sighs> Apparently, Snoke is like a clone of Vader's burnt DNA. Oh, that film just needs to stop talking. It needed to talk a lot more because yeah, it, would it was say... actually running, not after the fact. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I know, Duel of the Fates wasn't going, wasn't perfect, but it, it was sounds a lot more interesting. Conclusion. Yeah, I watched a video of some people reenacting a scene from it, like voicing it, where he speaks to it, Tor Valami speaks to. And I was like... Cinema, okay. Cinematic captures. Yeah, but it was like draining the life out of like this tree and then does it to him. I was like, oh, this is interesting. Like That's it's, that's bringing a bit back a bit of, you know, Darth Nihilus draining the life. Ah, uh, Darth Nihilus, we hardly knew you. I didn't know what the fuck to do with him in my films. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I, I gave him subtitles because I thought at least this way... I can let him say something. <laughs> I understand a lot of people were disappointed with what I did with Darth Nihilus, and as you know, in hindsight, I would do things differently with him. What would you do? I this don't. That's the thing. I don't know, but I know I'd do it differently. I think I would definitely <laughs> give him because I feel like I built him up in the Lost Masters to be this this presence uh, that you don't really understand, and then in the I, I feel like I did a bit of a smog to him. He's built up in one film and he dies at the start of the next one. Yeah, yeah, you totally fucking smelled. I did, I even used the opening music. I gave him Smaug's theme. Oh my, and did you consciously do this? Not not consciously, but I remember when I was watching The Hobbit, I was like, oh shit, this music is really good. (laughs) Because it how sort of like sinister and just un-Hobbit like it was. I was like, this would be great for something like Darth Nihilus. I don't know, it's an odd film, Legacy of the Sith. Because it's kind of like, it's the second half of The Lost Masters, but it's also the first half of The Prodigal Knight. Mm-hmm. Like that, I mean, I won't, I won't answer it too much because that's one of the questions, but that was supposed to be the original final film before I put it into four. That's actually a really good segue into that question. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, uh, you made, yeah, you, like Darth Icy, made Night of the Old Republic 2 into well, a tetralogy. I, before we go any further, I want to take some credit here. I'm the one who gave him the idea to make it into four. Really? Yeah. Um, yeah, no, basically back in the day when it was the old Kotal movie forums, uh, this is before I was making mine, I was a fan of his, and I loved his films, but I said to him, you know, you know, they're so long, you've got so much in it. I said, it takes me a couple of sittings to get through it. I said, I said, I said to him, you know, it's not as a bad thing. It's not like, you know, I'll trim your films. I don't want to be bored. I just said to him, if you've got so much left to do, why don't you just split the final one into two halves? And he, then he did it. I think, I mean, I don't know, maybe he had the idea himself, but all I remember is I suggested it to him one day. <laughs> the thing I saw was... Hey, the good on you. But, you know, it, just... it would have probably been like three and a half hours long if if, uh, if he did just the one. For sure, that's, it's, that's the same problem I faced. Um, Return of the Exile is a bit on the long side. When I eventually do a special edition of that, I'm probably going to try and trim about 10 minutes out of it, maybe, just to make it flow a bit better. Uh, the Lost <laughs> Masters... The Lost Masters, I, th- I think, is probably one of the best-paced ones I've done. It's about 2 hours, 20 minutes. And then I l- wrote my treatment for the third one, which was basically, you imagine Legacy of the Sith and the Prodigal Knight in one treatment. And there were things different that, but I looked at this, I was like, Jesus, how am I going to do this and not make it three and a half hours? So I started planning it, but then it would have been like the Battle of Pelos would have been 10 minutes. Isis would have been wrapped up by an hour. We would have had everything on Dan Swim of Kraya by an hour and a half. And then you would have had another hour, hour and 15 minutes for the Prodigal Night. So I just looked at it and I, I just thought, I was like, no way, no way can I do this. So... I tried to, that's when I thought, oh, I'll try to do something different with Legacy of the Sith. I was like, if I end it at Dantooine, and then I've just got Atris and Malachor for the final film, which I think in a way is why Legacy of the Sith is the shortest. It's two hours and six minutes. Um, but I kind of thought, well, I can use this to kind of flesh out Zek's sort of grief. 
But yeah, I'm, I was I was only halfway through that question when the last time we were talking about that because if you wanted to to clarify the whole uh, icy thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, so uh, you you made Knights of the Old Republic to a tetralogy. Mm. Um. One, will you be doing it for the first game? No. Yeah, I didn't think so. No, absolutely not. There's not enough there. They're just there. Yeah, exactly. There isn't enough there. Like the game is. Even if I was doing a faithful adaptation, there just there wouldn't be enough. I think they uh, Kota Movie Saga. They got it right when they decided to put it into three. I reckon you could even do it in two, to be honest. If you trimmed out a yeah, lot of characters and stuff. I've heard it pitched as two. Kind of I've like how The Hobbit was game. supposed to be two films originally. I think you could do it like that. But no, it's it's going to be three films for that one. The third one is looking like it's going to be a very long film. I'm hoping it doesn't go over three hours, but it might because I've got a lot planned for it. But there's just no conceivable way to split this in half, the final one, because whereas, like I said, with Legacy of Sith, I thought, oh, I'll end it there, and that'll be good for the next one. There's just, once the third one gets going, it gets going. There's just no way to cut it in half. You've mentioned music a few times. What What is your approach for building, like, your soundtracks? Um, it's just funny. I, someone asked me this the other day, and I answered in the comments. I don't really have a set approach to it. I think it's just, it's like with anything, like when writers tell you, oh, just read lots of books. It's kind of like that in a way. Just watch lots of films, watch lots of TV, games, and listen to their soundtracks. And if something sticks out to me, no matter whether the thing it's in is brilliant or rubbish if i like the music in it mm-hmm. i keep a note of it and then later on i go and look up the soundtrack of that film and i basically if there's certain tracks i like and i think yeah that could work in a scene i just download them and i keep it in a folder and then when i'm writing the script for the next one i might think oh this would work really nice for that scene and just just keep them as reference and then when i'm building the soundtrack i'll refer back to them because i usually i usually rename them to something like i think that the, the score i use for Dan Castro's theme, for example, I was—I think I was rewatching Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. And it was the bit when he was uh, when he's uh, the trial against the dragon. Mm-hmm. Uh, the music—I was thinking, like, yeah, this would really work for like Dan Castro's scene because it sounds a bit Star Warsy at points, even though it wasn't John Williams doing it. So it's just that, just taking a note of him. And uh, like again, recently, I—I I just I played the Uncharted games for the first time when I was doing the first film. And I think I got to Uncharted Three, which is like all out in the desert and that. I was like, oh, this is brilliant. This is perfect. This is Tatooine sorted. <laughs> so, it is just keeping a, a, a note of them. Um, I try to use a lot of um, game soundtracks as well, because especially like, one of my favorite game soundtracks is Dragon Age Inquisition. Uh, I think, really? Yeah, I don't know. Not every single track works for start for these films, but I just in general, the score is fantastic. Like I use... It's the um the music when I don't know if you've played it or not when you find Skyhold, um, and I remember the first time I played that was just after I'd started making the first film, and I thought this would be really good. Just literally pops into my head. This will be really good for the end of the film when he puts on a Jedi robe for the first time. It really is just listening to lots of scores, and like even if I'm like when I'm going for a run or something, I'll be listening to soundtracks and like imagining in my head, um what it will be with like i won't say what it is but the other day when i was i was out i had my headphones on and i was listening to this music i won't say what it is but it was i was thinking about it oh this would be great for the final duel between dan and malik at the end of the third film because i'm always planning ahead with them um and literally the scene was just playing in my head with it even though that film is you know ages away because i'm still finishing this one i was that i was like that's perfect make a note of that that's going in so that's another track for the third film already locked away, and I haven't finished the second one yet. Now, um, once you finished these adaptations, mm. uh, you started with KOTOR 2, and yep. they're finishing with KOTOR 1. Do you recommend they watch them in chronological order, or the order you released them? Ooh, um... That's a good question. The automatically, I would want to say watch them in order because it tells the story from start to end. But there's a lot of references in the prequels to these these prequels um, to my original films that I feel like if you were watching fresh for the first time, you won't get. Like 
uh, in for some example, Soldier of Destiny when he goes into the library. Yeah, Sa I was going to mention the library. Yeah, Sasha turns around, um, and so obviously to the audience, they're like, "Oh, I know that character." Dan's just a bit dumbfounded as he is in every situation that he walks into, um, and then straight after that, there's the students watching the um, hologram lesson thing, and Zek pops up in it, and you just be thinking, "Oh, okay, who's that? Why? Why was he given a name?" But then I guess you would get to the um, originals and you'd say, oh, I recognize him. <laughs> but I, would, I would say the originals first, also because when you watch them that way, you can see how I get better, like mm -hmm. in terms of what I can do with each film. Because like episode three, when I get to that, that will be the best thing I've ever done because it will be the most things I know. Mm -hmm. And then to go from that straight to Return of the Exile, which is by my standards now awful. It would it would be really jarring. So I would say watch the originals first, then the prequels. Would that answer change if somebody has not played the games? Um, hmm, that is a very good question. No, I don't think it would because the thing is, I've always tried to make these films accessible for people that haven't played the games. Like I don't. I mean, I got better as it went along. Return of the Exile might have a bit too much exposition in it, but I've tried to streamline them so it gives you the essentials of the state of the universe. And either the strong thing I think about is, well, sorry, the way I think of it is, the, my Code 2 films can stand on their own. They don't need anything else. My prequels, they do. You can't just watch them. And when by the end of the, when you get to the end of the third one, you ain't going to walk away from it thinking, ah, that was very, that was a satisfying ending. I don't need to see any more. Whereas with the originals, you could just watch them on their own, and that would be a complete four-part story. Mm -hmm. So, I, yeah, I would say even still for newcomers to watch the um, originals first, because even though they are heavier on exposition in points, I guess it immerses you more in the world, whereas my problem with these prequels, as much as I try not to, is at times it still assumes that the audience knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, definitely originals first. So, do you have anything you uh, want to promote? Um, the well, of course, the only thing I want to really promote is my upcoming film, Echoes of the Past. It's uh, the second part of my uh, Kotal One prequel series. Uh, it's I don't have a date for it yet, but it is for the people that have been asking me when is it coming out. It is coming very soon. I'm hoping by the end of June, um, and by the end of this month, I should be able to give a specific date and like a time for the live stream, but. Yeah, just keep just keep your eye on my YouTube channel. I so say I like to post updates on there a lot. Um, and yeah, that's it. I think it's. I think everyone's gonna. Re I hope everyone's gonna like it when it comes out. But that's that's it, really. All right. It was well. It was uh, good having you here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. This has been this has been great. And thank you for watching.